Hi, join me. Monday, 3rd December, Tommy Gold, 6.15pm. How the internet, Bampots and Rebels won the control of Celtic and helped bring you the demise of Rangers. Join me next week with a line of exclusive interviews with the Rebels who helped win control of Celtic, bringing it back to its fans and also the internet Bampots who have brought the good news of the demise of Oko Sevco. Join me next week, Ditch Radio Clyde, 615, followed by God Willing the Homeboys, half seven. Have an entertainment of Monday evening planned out. Ditch, boring old burger chain Radio Clyde, and join the best interviews the internet bampots can bring. The battle for control of Celtic Football Club appears to be over. A board meeting has been going on all day to decide the club's future. A Canadian millionaire, Fergus McCann, and a Scottish businessman, Brian Dempsey, have pledged new money for Celtic, which has been on the edge of receivership. Mr McCann's expected to be appointed chief executive. The Celtic fans celebrating the appointment of a new board at their Parkhead Stadium tonight. After talks which lasted all day, the man who had saved Celtic from the receivers by stumping up a million pounds to pay off some of the club's many creditors said the final details of the takeover were being clarified by lawyers. It's a matter of the, the lawyers sorting certain technicalities out between them. If you want to stay on, can I ask you to have patience, be helpful to the police, remember what we're here for, and we'll be out very, very shortly, I hope with the best possible news, so please. It's understood the deputy chairman, David Smith, has agreed to resign, along with two fellow directors, and they'll sell their controlling chairs to other board members. The Canadian tycoon, Fergus McCann, who arrived at the club this afternoon, will be appointed chief executive after a meeting of the new board next week. For more than a year, fans, disgruntled at the lack of success on the field and the financial chaos of it, have been calling for the board's resignation and have boycotted games. It's a far cry from the glory days of 1967, when the Lisbon Lions' defeat of Inter Milan brought the European Cup to Britain for the first time. But since winning the league and cup double in 1988, success has been in short supply, as their bitter old firm rivals have gone from strength to strength. The takeover brings to an end a long and at times farcical battle for control of one of Britain's most famous clubs. The tough task now for the new board is to restore Celtic to its former glory. Andrew Castle, BBC News, Parkhead. Proclaim to the Celtic support. The game is over. The Rebels have won. Yeah!
position, you're going to have less money to spend in your squad. So you're not going to have this, as good a squad uh, as you could have if you weren't building the, the stadium. But you had to build it because if you didn't build it, you'd have nowhere to play yeah. because you'd be breaking the law because you didn't have seats. Uh, so he had to be very focused, very determined, and he had to put up with all the people that were uh, criticising him uh, you know, for being tight with money. But he wasn't tight with money. He was just spending money on the infrastructure which has guaranteed our future. Yeah. If, he hadn't, if he hadn't spent that money, shareholders' money, not his, his own money and everybody else's money, in building that stadium, we wouldn't have the 60,000 capacity stadium, the 50,000 season ticket revenues that would have paid the wages of Harps and Sutton, Larson, uh, and all these guys uh, you know, that got us to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the UFA Cup final in 88. In 2002, we wouldn't have had all the money that got us to win the league championships over the years. It was only through being determined and focused and putting up with all the crap that he had to put up with when he was there that enabled us to make these achievements. So it's Quotas Club. And about to you, David Lowe, just prior to meeting David Lowe, um, I didn't know who he was, obviously, and I had heard through the grapevine that David Lowe and the other people, uh, including Brian Dempsey, we are trying to buy up shares um, that they were owned uh, by the Kelly Well, the Kelly Lights had the vast majority of shares, but in the grants, uh, but they had given shares out through the years to other people, sometimes for Christmas gifts and various other things. And they were trying to buy these shares up to get a shareholding to attend AGMs to try and uh, bring change at Celtic. Um, so, so I got in touch with David Lowe at the time, and uh, he, he was very educational to me as, as regards as to what, uh, what it was all about. I didn't understand that side of the business, uh, and he helped me sort of understand how it all worked. And um, so there's a great determination there from him uh, and from myself. Um, I remember uh, handing out leaflets uh, at Celtic Park, um, asking people uh, if they cared about the club to turn up at, uh, uh, I think it was, it was, in fact, it was the City Halls, and uh, around about 1993, um, it would have been around about September 1993. Um, anyway, I put a small advert, uh, cost myself of £90 pounds into the Sunday Mail and uh, asked people if they cared about the club turn up at the City Hall tomorrow night, um, which, was a, which was a Monday night. Um, come long story short, I went along there and uh, about 35, 36 people turned up around this small room, City Halls and the Candle Rigs, it's various rooms, it's a big hall, smaller halls, medium sized halls. Smaller holes. We're in the smaller one, 35. I just stood up and I said, Hi, my name's Matt McGlone. Uh, I had a Celtic uh, fan team called Once the Time Always a Tim. Uh, I think fans have to mobilise and get organised um, uh, against this board. I said, Because Celtic are in deep trouble. Obviously, there are a lot of this background information I had came via David Lowe in that area. And uh, Felix McCann hadn't been introduced to this scenario as far as I was concerned at this point. Uh, and I basically said, you know, I really think fans have to stand up and do something here because the club are losing money, we're not winning, um, gates are dwindling, and the uh, Rangers seem to be having the luxury of spending all this money that, that we don't have. Um, and about 36 people there, and there's a few dissenting grunts like, uh, who are you, and who you are about, and who do you think you yeah, are, and this is Celtic, and I'm saying, hang on a minute, I'm a Celtic fan, I'm trying to say we need to bring change, nobody's anti Celtic here are trying to do the best for the long term but you'd always get that attitude of who are you um, and that, that attitude existed right through um, by various uh, groups of people and individuals uh, right through to, to 1994 March course to, to win the old board gathered outside the stadium in the rain throughout the course of the day were delighted with the outcome from there it was just euphoria uh, me and a few of the guys and the rest of the committee all headed straight up to the park and uh, from standing outside with banners for months, uh, wondering if anything would ever really happen. We were really, guys were popping champagne. And I'll never forget, probably, I think it was Brian Dempsey and Fergus McCann came out the doors, you know, and proclaimed to the Celtic support. Join me, Tommy Gold, 6.15 this Monday. How the Rebels won, how we became internet bampots and brought you the news 
of the demise of Old Kosevko. First interview, Mr David Lowe, financial analyst, friend of Fergus McCann, gives a full and candid interview, followed by Matt McGlone, also friend of Fergus McCann, fellow saviour, along with many others. They bring the live story. Ditch Burger Chain, sad old Radio Snide. Tune in to where the Fenians tell their story on how we did it, how we saved the Celtic, how the rebels, who now became internet bampots, and also we will be joined with as yet unannounced, but trust me, there's some good brothers who have already, God willing, going to appear on the show next week, fellow internet bampots, God willing, next week, how the rebels won and how the internet bampots help bring you the story of the death of old Kosevko. God bless, God willing, see you next week. Monday. Really, really, guys were pop champagne. And I'll never forget, probably, I think it was Brian Dempsey and Fergus McCann came out the doors, you know, and proclaimed to the Celtic support. Game is over. The Rebels.